In this video, I'm going to show how to drive the variance of the least squares estimator B for the multiple linear regression model. So re recall what the multiple linear regression model is. We have y equals x times beta plus epsilon. And we're assuming that the expected value of epsilon is zero and the variance of epsilon is sigma squared times i, okay? Where um, epsilon is our model error, right? It's an n by one vector of model errors. Y is an n by one vector of response variables or responses, okay? X is our design matrix. It is n by p right the first columns is all ones and then we have all of our other variables and then beta is p by one okay so n is the uh, sample size let me write that so we have n is the sample size and p is my number of uh, parameters Okay, so I've previously shown that the least squares estimator of this beta is B, and B equals X transpose X inverse times X transpose Y. Okay, so this is our least squares estimator of that beta there. Right, and right now what I want to know is, okay, so what's the variance of B. Okay, so this is going to equal the variance of X transpose X inverse X transpose Y. Right, and we have the assumption that X's are not random. Okay, X is not random. So just remember uh, as a you know, side fact about variance, if you have a vector uh, that's not random times a vector that is random, this equals the non-random vector times the variance of the random vector times the non-random vector transposed. Okay, you remember if this was scalars we would just pull out and A would just be squared, right? But now that they're vectors you have to be careful and cognizant of your um, of the size of these vectors, right? And make sure that when you're, when you're doing the multiplication that the multiplication it comes out correct, right? So if Y is uh, N by A, one, then the variance should come out to be an n by n. Okay, so basically all of this here is what a is. Okay, so this, so let's go ahead and write this down. So this is going to be x transpose x inverse x transpose, right? That's the first a times the variance of y, right? That's the centerpiece times x transpose x inverse x transpose transposed. Okay. All right, so let's pause here and let's think about what's the variance of y. What is the variance of y? The variance of y would be the variance of, here's y, so it's x times beta plus epsilon. Now X is not random, beta is also non random. Okay? Beta is our model parameters. They're not random. So when you take the variance of X times beta, it just is basically goes away. It's zero. So the variance of this basically equals the variance of epsilon, which we've assumed is sigma squared times I. Okay? So this is sigma squared times I. Okay, I still have this front material here. All right, this back material, right? If you remember, so say I have uh, A and B transpose, right? And A and B are matrices. This is equal to B transpose, A transpose, right? You have to reverse the order when you bring in the transpose. So X is basically B, right? So X transpose. When you transpose a transpose, you get back to the original uh, matrix. So X transpose transpose is X. Okay. 
Then I have x transpose x inverse. This is also transposed, right? This is basically a. Okay, let's take a second to think about this guy. We know that x transpose x is symmetric, right? Because if I were to take its transpose, I would get itself. So x transpose x is symmetric. Because it is symmetric, it's inverse. This is also symmetric. Okay, so if it's, it's inverse, it's symmetric, that means that if you take the transpose of it, you get itself by definition of symmetry. So I can write this without the transpose. Okay, with and without the transpose, it's exactly the same thing. This is the same thing as this guy. Okay. All right, so let me go ahead and rewrite everything else that I have. So I have equals. Now, x transpose x inverse x transpose. Now this piece here, this is a scalar. Okay, well, the sigma squared is a scalar. The i is just an index matrix, so whether or not you have it, it's irrelevant, right? Uh, so it doesn't matter, so I can actually just not write that i there. Right, it's in the center of two matrices, so it would just basically do nothing. This sigma squared, I can go ahead and pull it out front though because it's a scalar, it's just a single number. Okay, Okay, so this is where I'm at. This is where I'm at. I'm at sigma squared, x transpose x, inverse, x transpose x, x transpose x, inverse. Okay, I just rewrote the exact same thing, just all in the same color. Okay, let's look at what we have here. This is exactly the same as this, right? So. Remember, if you have a inverse times a, you get the identity matrix by definition of an inverse. So this is the same as this guy, except this one is inverted. So they basically, they cancel each other out, all right? And you're left with sigma squared x transpose x inverse, all right? This is the variance of my least squares estimator. Okay, now you don't, I don't know a situation where you would actually know what sigma squared is, okay? Sigma squared is the variance of your model error term epsilon, right? We don't know what the true model error is, so we don't know what exactly epsilon is, right? So what we do is we take the sum of our residuals, right, where our residuals are the observed value minus the predicted value, okay? So the sum of the squared residuals and divide that by n minus p, right? So this is called s squared, right? And I could rewrite this using vector notation as e transpose e, whereas e is an n by one vector, okay? This is also called the mean squared error. All right, so in real life, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna plug in this estimator of, this is actually an unbiased estimator of sigma squared, and we're gonna plug this, this mean squared error estimate in, and then we're gonna be able to get an estimate of the variance of our, um, of our least squares estimator B.